Joining us here at Post 9, Johnny Fine, Glo Goldman Sachs Global Head of Investment Grade Debt. Always on a Fed day. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to see you all. You're 25, right? I am 25. Why? So I think a couple reasons. I think firstly, if you replay everything that's happened since the July Fed, financial conditions are actually quite a bit easier. Stocks are back to the levels more or less they were at before. Credit spreads are back to more or less the levels they were at before. Term interest rates are 30 to 35 basis points lower. And the terminal rate hasn't changed. It's just there in 12 months, as predicted by the Fords, as opposed to 24 months. That's actually real easing into the economy. So I think that's point number one. I think point number two, uh, and this is where a lot of people, I think, might disagree with this train of thought. I think that the Fed still has a perspective, and a number of guests have talked about this today, that 50 is generally reserved for more emergency type of action. Now, I think we're 200 basis points in restrictive territory, so I think the Fed is well within their rights to say a 50 basis point cut is appropriate. But I don't think they've done a strong enough job as yet of destigmatizing a 50 basis point cut. So what I'd be looking for today is a dovish 25 yeah. opening the door for 50 basis points being normal course of action in the future. And then, of course, we'll run the play of, will the next meeting be 25 or 50? That'll be with us for a while. I, I mean, they, he is going to have to do a little work if he does 25 yep. on the dovish front to convince the markets that they're, that they're still right with the path in order to keep financial conditions from tightening, right? Agreed. And I think that that will be something they'll look to protect both in the press conference as well as in the dot plot as well. Um, so I think that seeing a sell-off in long-term yields will be a very undesirable outcome. My guess is that the Fed will look to try and protect the shape of the yield curve as it stands right now. What is it? Oh, go ahead. It kind of sounds like what Canada's put together, right? A couple 25s, last few days, we're not averse to a 50 down the road if we need it. Yep. Is that a decent playbook or analog? I think it's a good playbook. Yeah. I, I think the market will like that. My guess is that the market doesn't like 25 when they first see it. But when they see the dots and when they hear a more dovish tone in the press conference, I think they'll be soothed by that. That would be my guess as to how the day plays out. But I think that's a decent playbook. We saw Steve reference, I mean, we're uh, sub 3% by 2025, maybe yeah. by this time next year. Do you yeah. believe that's going to happen? So Fed futures forwards do a terrible job of predicting what actually happens. I think we looked at data back to 2017. If you compare where the market thinks Fed funds will be in 12 months' time and look at where they actually were, then there's a prediction miss by, on average, 60 basis points. And so my guess is also that we won't be at that level in 12 months' time. My personal view is actually I think we'll be higher. I don't think the terminal rate will be as low as 275 to 3%. I think it'll be higher. I think the, the reality is, is that the things that we're concerned about today, in particular labor market, I don't see that as being a huge headwind for the U.S. economy. It's a headwind. But I think as we get into the easing cycle with some 25 basis point cuts, potentially opening the door for 50 basis point cuts, I actually think that we'll be on a much better glide path. And I don't think the Fed will need to go that deep that far.